Hi, I'm Katie from Barn2 Media and today I'm going to tell you about a new way to display your upcoming events. So this method it uses the plugins for events like the Events Calendar, Events Calendar Pro um, or by Modern Tribe. Um, you might be using other event plugins that work with those such as Events Tickets, Events Tickets Plus, that kind of thing. But the method I'm going to teach you is all about using those plugins, um, all based around the free Events Calendar plugin by Modern Tribe. You can do something similar with other event plugins and I'd be happy to help you with that. And because the Tribe plugins are so popular for displaying events on a website, we're going to focus on those in this tutorial. So when you get the events calendar and its associated plugins, it comes with some built-in views for your events. So the one we're on at the moment, um, you can see, is Month View, which displays um, events on a calendar. And it also comes with other views, such as List View, um, where you can see a list of each event, and Day View, if you have lots of events on a day. But you can see each event takes up a lot of space. And if you have loads and loads and loads of events on your website, you might want to provide a more um, succinct structure for your events where your users can see lots of events all on a single page. And that isn't an option by default within these plugins. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use the events calendar plugins with our own plugin, Post Table Pro, which lets you display them much more succinctly. So I'll show you what we're going to do. This is a list of events using Post Table Pro. Each of these events have been added using the Events Calendar plugin um, in the back end. So we're still using those same plugins. And if you click through, then you'll be able to see the single event page which is provided by those plugins. So this is a page from the Events Calendar plugin. And so what we're doing differently with Post Table Pro is displaying events in a table. And you can see that although we've only got six events on this website, in theory, you could have many, many more and um, just compare the amount of space. So this amount of space for each event on the default event list compared to just one or two lines depending on what information you display in the table. So it's a good way to have a whole directory or database of events to display them in this way. And it's also good because you can click on columns to sort by that column. You can sort by days and that kind of thing. So it's a really good way to help people find the events on your website. So now I'm going to tell you how I did this. So to start off with, you need to have set up the events calendar plugin on your website. Now, if you don't know how to do that, there's lots of good resources. Um, I've done an online course which teaches you how to use these plugins, and I'll just put a link to that on this video here so that you can sign up. Um, and I've also got an ebook about setting up these plugins. So if you haven't already done that, then you can use the online course or the ebook. But assuming that you've got your events website all set up, what we're going to do in this tutorial is set up the table to display your events. So you can display a table um, of events on any page on your WordPress website. So we're going to go into the admin now and I'm just going to create a blank page. So if you don't already have one, just the usual pages add new. So we've got a new page here and first of all I'm going to create a really simple list of my events. So to do that, I will tell you the exact syntax that you want to use. So it's the square brackets, and then it is posts underscore table. Um, that tells it to display a table of posts. And you have to tell it that you're going to display the event post type. So otherwise, it'll just display your normal blog post, which is not relevant to your event. So to do post type, you go post underscore type equals open quotes and it's tribe underscore events close quotes close brackets so what we've done here is tell post table pro to display a table of posts with the post type tribe events now tribe events are what the events calendar plugins call their events so in the admin for your website because you've got this plugin set up already um, events calendar has added this event section and all the events in there are called tribe events 
In fact, if you look at the very bottom of my screen now, you can see it's right at the end of that weird link. It says try events. So that is the name of the post type. So let's view our page and see what it looks like. And I should probably have mentioned that as well as the events calendar, you need to have installed Post Table Pro on your website. So I'll put a link to that here as well. So the plugins you need to use this are events calendar and Post Table Pro. So we've saved the page and we're going to refresh our, we're going to view the page, which is here. So it's not as good as the one we just looked at because I haven't finished yet. So what we've got is the event title, which looks great. We've got the content from the event description, which is fine. Um, we've got the date, but that's actually not the date of the event. That is the date of the, the event was added to the website. So that's not what we want. We've got author, which is okay for blogs, but no, don't want that on your event site. And it's the category column is blank because it's actually looking for post categories. We haven't told it the correct terminology to use for event categories. So that's what the table looks like by default. Now we're going to configure it further to make it more relevant to you. So we're going to keep adding to our short code. So we're going to tell it what columns we want to display in the table. That's going to get rid of things we don't want, like author, and add the correct columns that are relevant to our events. Uh, well, to do this, there's lots of um, different fields that the events calendar plugin stores for your events. It stores things like the event start date, end date, um, organizer, venue, all that kind of thing. And so to find out the exact syntax, um, you need to read the blog post that I've written alongside this tutorial. And then you can just copy and paste um, exactly the column names you want. So for this tutorial, I'm going to add columns for the event start date, which I think most people would want. I'm going to add the event category, and I'm going to continue using the event title and the description because I think most people would probably want those. So to extend the table, we're going to write columns equals, and this is where we're going to write what columns we want. So first of all, we want title. So that is the event title that you wrote when you created it, which is in this box on your event pages. Uh, we're going to write content, which will be the first um, however many characters from the description of your event. So it helps people to know what to expect and encourage them to click through to view it in more detail. So after content, we have got um, something a bit more complicated because we want to display a custom field. Um, this is one of the fields that the events calendar plugin stores and it's going to be start date. So first I'm going to tell Post Table Pro that I want to display a custom field. So that's CF colon and then underscore event start date. Again, you need to get that exactly right. So click on the blog post that goes alongside this uh, tutorial and copy and paste cf colon underscore event start date with the exact capitalization because that's really important. That's the terminology that the event calendar plugin uses behind the scenes. So next we're going to use a taxonomy, one of the event calendar taxonomies to display the event categories which you, event, you would have added under events event categories. So that's all event calendar um, pages there. So to display those in your table, you want tax colon. So it's not a custom field, it's a taxonomy. And you want to go um, tribe, T R I B E underscore event underscore cat. And then you want to close your quotation marks and your short code should already be closed like that. So let's update the page and see what it looks like. Okay, brilliant. So we've got the title, which we had before, we've got the content, and now we have the event start date, which is correctly displaying the start dates, and we have the event categories. And you can see now that these are the actual correct categories that we're using for our event. Um, and it's quite interactive already, because you can sort by those different fields. You can click on a category and it will get rid of everything that's not in that category. So it's quite flexible.
So I'll just get rid of that so I can see them all. Uh, but as you can see, the cat some of the category titles are not very good. So event start date, all one word, not particularly user friendly. So the final thing I'm going to show you how to do to get your table just right is to rename these column headers. So to do that, we go back to our shortcode and we're going to add some more stuff to the shortcode. So to rename, we have to add colon and then what we want to call our column. So I'm going to rename my content column to event overview because that's what it is. So it's not content, it's an event overview. So after content, I'm going to do a colon and then I'm going to write event overview like that. I'm also going to rename the date because you may remember event start date or one word isn't great. So we're going to change that. And to do that, um, so you've got CF colon underscore event start date. We need to put the colon and the correct name after that. So we're going to do colon and without leaving any spaces or anything, we're just going to write date, which I think is going to be a bit better than event start date or one word. And similarly, we're going to rename the category. So I'm going to put a colon after the tribe events cat, and I'm just going to call it category. It says events category at the moment, it's just a bit long. So we're going to save that and have another look. So I'll refresh the page. So we can see that that's renamed to event overview, which is a bit more descriptive. This is renamed to date rather than event start date. And event category has now been renamed to category. So that's pretty good. Um, to make your table even more personalized than this, I recommend that you use the Post Table Pro documentation to see exactly what options are available because there's a lot you can do with it. You can change how many d display um, per page by default, you can change the default sort order. So you might want to sort by date as soon as people load the page. That um, You can change the columns, display different information about your events. You can change how long this excerpt is or get rid of it. There's tons of stuff you can do. So have a look at the documentation, having used this tutorial as a starting point and create your own database of events. And I hope that is useful to you. Um, I'll put another link up so that you can get Post Table Pro because you need to use that as well as the events calendar plugin. And have fun setting it all up.